It is six o'clock and I will call this meeting of the Committee of the Whole of the Lunenburg Town Council to order. Um, before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that we are in Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. And I would look to council for or the committee uh, for a motion to approve the agenda. Moved by the deputy mayor, seconded by Councillor Bertels. Are there any additions or deletions? Seeing none. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. That takes us on to committee the whole meeting minutes approval, the approval of the minutes from our April 6th meeting. Is it anybody's pleasure to move that? Councillor Duggan, seconded by Councillor Ernst. Any errors or omissions to note? Seeing none. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. That takes us on to business arising from the minutes or unfinished business. And of course, the first item up is the draft budget. And we are fortunate to have Paul Wills, uh, the CEO and treasurer of the Municipal Finance Corporation with us tonight to provide a debt affordability review. And then we will get into our budget discussions with staff. So Paul, you have the floor. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I'm going to give you a brief uh, introduction of who I am so you know who I am because um, I was quite familiar with this area a number of years ago, as B knows. Um, my name is Paul Wills. I'm the Chief Executive Officer for the Nova Scotia Municipal Finance Corporation. Uh, to give you an idea of my background, uh, 10 years of my career I spent in municipal government. I was the Chief Accountant for the County of Kings for eight years. And I was the director of corporate services for the town of New Glasgow and the town of Westville at the same time. Uh, when I came to the province, I spent the first year uh, as the manager of uh, municipal finance. And then I was moved over to be a municipal advisor uh, for approximately six and a half years. Five years of those, I, I was the advisor for the Chester to Digby area. So the town of Lunenburg was one of mine for about five years. Um, I then moved on to the Municipal Finance Corporation where I've been now since December 2014. So I have a strong background in municipal government. Um, I did spend 10 years early in my career in the private sector. So I've got like all over the map when it comes to my experience. Uh, I've worked for big business, small business, international business. Um, so that'll give you an idea of my background. I am a, a designated accountant. I have my CMA before we became the CPA. Um, so what I wanna do is uh, basically go over this model with you. It, it, it's a tool that we provide to municipalities. It was developed in 2004 uh, to help municipalities look at um, their debt levels and how much debt they could carry. Uh, over the years, it has morphed into more of a sustainability <coughs> model that helps council when they're looking to make decisions and planning for the future. Um, we've actually used this model in the past as well uh, when a few of the towns up in Cumberland County dissolved. Um, instead of hiring uh, CA firms to do the pro formas for the amalgamated or the new municipalities, we've actually used this model to show what a, the new municipality would look like going forward. So what I'd like to do is start off with the note tab on the spreadsheet. So what we do here is we actually identify the different assumptions that have been used in the model. Um, for instance, uh, the, there's percentages that are used to drive the models to give you a picture for 10 years out. Just to let council know, it's not on the SharePoint page, it's that we would present the model this evening and then post some slides for you today. So it's only on the SharePoint page. Okay. And Heather, you should be able to make a I have, we have some hard copies, but I don't know that that will be particularly helpful at this stage. <laughs> yeah, the, these are just the assumptions that were made uh, to drive the model. So between your director of finance and myself, we looked at the percentages, which I'll, I'll show you the screen briefly when we get there so you can see how it works. Um, to make the model true to its effort, we've included the election expense in the year that you have your municipal elections and then the reverse the following year. Um, because $28,000 is a significant amount of money, although I do know you do put some money into a reserve each year, which are also backed out in the same year. Um, currently, we're using the borrowing rates from our spring 2020 debenture. 
our fall 2020 debenture hasn't occurred yet. Um, a lot of things came into play because of that. Um, we do have a date when it's going to cabinet to get approval, so it is happening soon. Um, we did include reserves for the deed transfer tax because that's a reoccurring thing that the town does do, put in the reserves, plus with the uh, public works equipment and as I've mentioned previously, the election. Um, the debt repayments uh, that are in the model are actually from our records uh, because we know exactly what you guys owe us and when it's due. It's a good check for us to see if you're including it in the budget or not at proper rates because your budget should be zero. When I put my figures into your into the spreadsheets and we look at the operating budget. Um, we use the operating budget and currently we're using the operating budget from 2020 to 2021 and it's pre COVID is what we're using. I understand that you've adjusted uh, your budget because of COVID and that wouldn't be a good budget to use to go forward because those expenses at those times were thought to be just that year. Um, we've used uh, the CPI is used in the model as well. And currently as of December, 2020, um, CPI was 1.3. That's when I actually was working on this model for the town. Um, we looked at the trending for your residential, commercial and resource and seasonal assessments. And we've used 3%, 2%, 1%, 2%, for those various assessments to drive the model uh, for the bump that you normally get from the assessment increases. Um, there is no short-term interest for the capital going forward after the current year. And, whoops, if you bear with me. Okay, yep. And the police increase that was anticipated for 21-22 was 4.5%. After that, we're using 3% in the model because I can tell you back when I worked in municipal government, the average increase for policing, uh, both when I was with the town and Kings County, typically was between 45 and 5% every year. Uh, what we've been seeing over the last little while, it's not typically that high, although you do have the odd year where there's a catch up. So if you could go to the town budget tab. I'm not gonna go through this tab once it comes up. This is basically the information that was provided to me from the town. So I have three years worth of actuals and the pre COVID budget for 2021. That's all I'm gonna say about that tab. Um, those are numbers that you would be familiar with uh, had you seen the budgets and the actual financial statements uh, for the previous counselors that were here. If you could go to the input data tab. So in this particular tab, this is where we actually link the uh, revenues uh, from your budget and your three years prior. Um, you can see in the top section, I don't know if I can get this out of my glasses. That work? No, you don't have to bite there, are you? No. If you go to the left. Yeah, so if you see there on the screen at the very, on the left there, if you look at rows 10 through uh, 17, that's all your revenue um, that's linked to your budget. And then if you look at column H, if you could just go over a little bit, you can see that the, some of the uh, rows have percentages in them. Those percentages are what's driving the model for your revenue calculations. Uh, if you go back to the left for a second, please. So if you just scroll down to the mandatory expenditures there at line 20, uh, yep, 20, that captures your education, assessment, corrections, houses, and library costs. Um, and you can see that what's driving those costs is for education, it will be uniform assessment. And for the assessment through the library, it's CPI. Um, and then it, in the yellow section there, that basically is just grouping all your expenses from the next tab that we're going to be looking at. If you go down um, a little bit further down the screen, I just want to get to the bottom there. We do capture in the next section there uh, some of the FCI calculations that the Department of Municipal Affairs does. And then down at the bottom, you can see from line 57 down to line 65 is where we're actually capturing your tax rate and your assessment. And you can see how the assessment uh, grows a little bit each year. If you could go to Schedule 1B. Let me 
So in one B, this is where we capture all your expenditures. So we group them by uh, different categories depending on what's driving the model. Um, so if you go to the very top there, you will see like, for instance, the mayor's uh, remunition, the council's, the council's expenses, other legislative, and on the right hand side there, and uh, you have to go to your right a little bit more, please, to column H. Again, you can see the percentages that we're using to drive the model, okay? Uh, I'm not gonna go through every line on that. Um, we do have a separate tab in here for the sewer because I understand that when you calculate uh, your sewer rate, it's based on capturing all your expenses, including your debt, including anything going to the reserves. So we've built a separate page here that captures that information. Uh, if you go to the capital budget, so on here, this is the information that we were provided for your capital budget um, based on the different uh, uh, projects that you plan to do in 2021, 21, 22, and 22, 23. Uh, and then uh, we were told to use just half a million dollars for the remaining years as an item because you are gonna do some capital, okay? Uh, if you scroll down the page, uh, you might need to go all the way to your left, yeah. Okay, you scroll down the page. If you look at the source of funding, uh, this is the funding that you plan to use. And if there's any grants in there in future years, uh, you're probably hoping to get those grants from the feds and the provincial government. Um, but they are factored into the model to drive the model, okay? Uh, if you go down just a little bit more, yeah, right there, oh, up a bit. Yeah, that's good. So if you see the long-term borrowing uh, assumptions, um, we have 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, depending on the useful life of the asset determines what the legal length of time you can actually borrow for for that asset. Those percentages that you see there, the estimated interest rates, those are the all-in costs from our spring debenture of 2020. Um, what I wanna say about our borrowings is um, our interest rates are not based on prime. Uh, we borrow on the pro uh, uh, provincial credit um, and we have a syndicate that actually tells us what it would take for us to sell our debentures on an open market. Um, so it has nothing to do with prime. So if prime goes up or down, it really has no bearing on what interest rates we're going to get because ours is based on if, we, if you were an investor on the market, you would be looking at our debentures and deciding whether or not you wanted to buy them, okay? Um, we're gonna go to the debt tab next. So as I mentioned earlier, if you look at uh, the top two rows, the annual principal and annual interest, those numbers come right from our statements, not your budget. They're not linked to your budget. They come from what we have on our files at, rec uh, at work. Um, this one here actually will go through, if you go down to lines 23 to lines 26, if you look at line 24, that is actually the anticipated debt repayment from the capital borrowings from the capital sheet calculated for, uh, on the prior tab. Line 26 is the estimated interest cost. So we actually have built into this model using those interest rates and the length of the term that you're going to borrow, what the anticipated borrowing costs are going to be. You will note if you when you get the hard copies of this present or this spreadsheet, uh, if you're borrowing in 2020, 2021, and it's a fall debenture, it does not hit your financial statements until the next year. If you borrow in the spring, you will have an interest charge. Um, it's just the way that we only go out twice a year. Typically, it's in May, June for the spring. Typically, it's November, October, November for the fall. So if you borrow in the spring, you will have an interest charge because six months from when we actually do it, you'll have an interest payment due and it'll be prior to March 20, March year end. So now we're gonna look at the operating budget. So based on the assumptions that are in the model, and again, you have to keep in mind that this is the budget from last year, because um, I understand that you have been having some discussions on your current year's budget. So there's things that would be potentially in those budgets uh, or discussions that would not be factored into this model because we only use approved budgets. So this is basically showing you um, what the bottom line would look like over the next couple of years based on that 2020, 2021 budget with the assumptions that we've used. 
um, when you have your 21-22 budget done, this model would be updated to reflect those and we would again look at the percentages to ensure that the percentages we're using are more accurate to drive the model. So this model is, as I said in the beginning, was based on um, how much debt a, a municipality could carry. And as I said, it's morphed over into something more of a, a sustainability model. Um, you can use it to look at, if you were looking at making changes in service levels, they can be factored into this model and it'll show you how it's going to affect it going out. Um, I, I know when I was a municipal advisor, my boss used to say to me, you know, he was glad that I was one of the advisors because I was an accountant with municipal experience because 90% of the decisions council makes have a financial nature to them. And when you make a decision today, um, the chances are, if it's a financial one especially, it's going to affect next year, the year after, the year after, the year after. And a lot, of, a lot of councils from my own experience, both from working in municipal government and being a municipal advisor, they're focused on today, not the future. This model for any capital decisions you're looking at making, if you're looking at you know, implementing shared services, if you're looking at raising your tax rate or lowering your tax rate, all those things can be factored into this model to help you see the long-term effect of that decision today. Um, I don't think I have anything else to say right now. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Lisa, I'll give you an opportunity if you wanted to weigh in with anything else supplementary to that. Okay, then I'll open up the floor um, if councillors have any questions for Paul on his presentation. Everybody chomping at the bit. No? Nope. All right. Thank you for the presentation, Paul. Thank you. Uh, and I mean, if you have any questions, you can filter them through either Lisa or Kathleen, and I'll, I'll happily get back to them and they can pass it on to you. But as I said, it, it's, it's a great model to help looking at future decisions. So, okay. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. We certainly have plenty of future decisions to make. So that takes us on to the review of the capital budget. And I believe there was uh, some top sheet information sent out in the package. Lisa, I'm assuming you're going to want to overview this for council's benefit. So we will give you the floor to do that. Thank you, Your Worship. I would just uh, get ourselves settled here. And I, perhaps just before I review that top sheet, I guess, in, in looking at this model, um, I don't know if all the new councillors know that we have a, a, a debt uh, portion that we, we cap at, like a policy about uh, how much debt we carry. So that is 12%. The provincial cap for municipalities is 15%. And the reason for the spread is, is a bit because to account for perhaps our lower reserves that we, we haven't accumulated. So it allows from, for some flexibility there. So when Paul was just referencing that, when he was talking about your capital and that we had capped it out at a certain amount, that was us trying to make sure that we could afford um, perhaps some funding for the wastewater treatment plant and still maintain that, that debt level. So that is sort of the decisions that I was using when I built the top sheet for the capital budget review. That really, it had a $1.1 million borrowing. That is really too rich for us at this point in, in capital borrowing. So the ways you can fund that or you can make cuts, you can raise the tax rate to do it, or you can take it from your reserves, but your reserves obviously have a limited capacity for that. So staff have, have looked at it, suggested some cuts to, to bring the debt down to a half a million dollars. Um, when we looked at that, that was around 30% that we had to cut. We didn't factor cuts into the wastewater treatment because of their importance. But there were two cuts that subsequently came in the wastewater treatment section. One, because there was information came that that, that project didn't need to go forward. The other was a, a capacity issue that they, they didn't feel that they were going to be able to get to that project in this upcoming year. I can go down your worship through each section if you want, or if council just wants to ask questions, I'm, I'm happy to do whatever pleases council for a review of that. All right, quick overview or are we good? 
Okay, I'm, I'm getting the sense that people are good. So if, if anybody has questions for Lisa on this, uh, Deputy Mayor. Well, I do have some questions, Lisa, or, or some, uh, some different assumptions. But I, I, you know, I, uh, by and large, I really uh, appreciate and like what you've done here. The one concern that I do have is that we are looking at, you know, uh, reserves here in some cases. So we are dipping into reserves to cover uh, some of our capital spending, which will have that impact down the road on us. Because I mean, if we, because we're gonna have to replenish those. So again, I look at, I'm trying to avoid uh, robbing Peter to pay Paul. So that, you know, I like to see a, a I like to see us build a budget that will, will you know, carry us through the next four years in, in a fashion that we're not going through this again in, in another year. So I had a couple of suggestions if you, you know, if you want me to. The floor is yours. That, okay. So, so the annex roof, uh, you know, I, I would question um, deferring that rather than going through with it. It's a, it's a surplus building that we are putting forward for sale. So. That would be a suggestion I'd have for that would give us, you know, twenty six thousand dollars or something in that neighborhood. And Mayor, would yeah. it be easier if we just stop when, as you get to each question and maybe the manager could okay. speak yeah. to that yeah, rather than a group? Yeah. Would that yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. So we'll, so perhaps Mr. Yeah. Brocken can speak we'll look to the that. facilities yeah. manager to weigh in on uh, deferring the annex roof. Uh thank you, Worship. Uh just the I guess the current state of the roof is that, I mean, it is currently leaking. It uh, sort of drastically needs to be replaced. Um, we also have uh, received a commitment from Nova Scotia Community College for $5,000. Uh, they've already contributed uh, towards uh, re-roofing that building. Um, and I, you know, I, I do think that it would be a wise investment if we are gonna sell that building to to re-roof it um, before we do. I guess, I guess my question would be then, you know, the will we get that value out? I mean, if we're gonna trade four quarters for a dollar or are we gonna actually come out ahead at the end of the day by re-roofing? Uh, I would certainly think that you will absolutely get your money back. Okay. Um, all right, we'll come back for that later. Thanks, thank you. Um, the next thing that I sort of mentioned, and this was, again, it comes to, de well, detransfer taxes, so we can save those, we can apply those in other areas, right? Certainly, yeah. any, well, it depends on the, the particular item, because we can't use detransfer tax for equipment purchases. Okay. Um, but it, yes, if you took one item for detransfer tax way, generally you can use it towards another item, yes. So I'm thinking that maybe the tender package for the town hall exterior restoration to be deferred for another year, $50,000 being. Um, the other thing that um, I'm looking at the Blockhouse Hill and general capital reserves. Um, so if we rated for uh, for instance, like the RCMP increase. So if we rate it for the RCMP increase, could we take that and kind of use it towards the Blockhouse Hill uh, expense? Uh, well, you could certainly do that, uh, Deputy Mayor, I guess. So just to, to know where those general capital reserves come from, uh, this movie. So those are particularly when you sell, they're not ones that we've contributed to, they're particularly when you sell surplus properties. Okay. So that's where those have come from. So they are limited. I mean, if you're not selling something yeah. continuously, they get used up and then they're gone. Um, but certainly, I mean, council, it's at council's discretion, how the capital budget is funded. Hmm. So certainly if you were going to have a rate increase and wanted to apply to a particular item, you would be able to do that. Yes. And the nice thing about if we would rate for that, it would, and we cover the $40,000 this year. Well, then next year we have the $40,000, which is probably going to be the increase for the RCMP anyway, again. So it's almost like raining this year for two. It's kind of how I look at it anyway. Um, the other thing is down where it is the saltwater intrusion. Um, 
you know, I'm trying to write my look at my notes here. Uh, okay, yeah, that's where I was saying instead of using um, the deed transfer tax and the general capital reserves, we could bring the fifty thousand dollars from the town hall down in there to cover that. And I think that would also be enough then also to cover the capital borrowing in the blower replacement. Now I was gonna, I was thinking about bringing that down from the annex building as part of that as well. Yeah, the annex building and the, uh, and the town hall could cover those. Can I pause you there for just a second to yeah. allow staff to yeah. weigh in? Yeah, um, just on the tender package for the exterior restoration and town hall. And uh, if there was anything about the block house hill map, but you're not suggesting we cut it, you're just no. suggesting we fund it. Trans in fund it in a different way, yeah. yeah. Mr. Brack. Thank you, Worship. So the, I guess the, the tender package for town hall, we had, a, we had an assessment done uh, on the roof on this building. Um, and there's certainly a, a lot of issues up there that need addressing. It's, I mean, it is currently leaking. So the plan was to uh, get, a, get a plan together uh, this year, do a tender package, and then uh, look towards starting the work uh, on the roof and the exterior the following two years. Um, I mean, I guess, you know, it, like anything, it could be pushed back, but, uh, you know, the, the, the roof is currently leaking and uh, I would, you know, certainly encourage you to take a look at the uh, assessment that was uh, previously done. And maybe if I could just weigh on that, Your Worship, well, yeah. it's just that there, there does seem to be some talk about heritage type grants that may be coming up. And so having that tender package to and having that information done would be really helpful for us if we were trying to source grants for a, a larger restoration project. So it project. speaks to shovel readiness. It's certainly, Your Worship. In terms of building retrofit funding yeah. from other levels of government. Correct, yes. Because yeah. that, that is a big uh, project in our 10-year capital plan. All right. And then we have um, general capital reserves coming for the compressor overhaul. So I was just thinking that we could take that from the cemetery road repair and move that up there and and uh, defer some of the cemetery road repairs that would come then for that year. So just the pause for the department, relevant department head, would it be the end? Yeah, the engineer. Dennis, if you could speak to that. <clears throat> yeah, so the identification of the 25,000 for, for the cemetery access roads um, so it seems to be so something that that's necessary in the near future in order for us to access that that, that area going down the hill. Um, um, <clears throat> so so today today we have trouble getting to down there with our own resources as well as the few funeral homes. Um, but uh, but but I think that there's a compromise to be to, to be made there is that we could do a partial. Uh, installation of those new, new roads uh, that this year and perhaps finish them off next next year. Um, so, so 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 that that would be a work workable kind of solution there. But 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 it but the current situation with their with their ability to access uh, plots that down that side of the hill, uh, especially when it's wet, um, is a is a concern for, for us for today. Maybe I'll just note yep. that that what Mr. McPherson is speaking to is that's the fifteen thousand yep. dollar reduction to yep. the ten, and just to Deputy Mayor's point about transferring that money up to that compressor overhaul, that would be one that wouldn't be able to be funded from deed transfer tax. Just to note that okay. now you you could take it from the public works equipment reserve, but that too is is one that you replenish with a mm -hmm. twenty thousand dollars annually. But there is more than that than we're using in this current budget. And um, okay, just a couple of one other thing we could defer is the cemetery backhoe. Uh, that's fifty-five thousand dollars there. All right, we'll let that engineer weigh in. <laughs> well, the cemetery backhoe right now is in pieces. Um, it's it's in the shop. Um, the the, uh, the the engine has been dismantled, and we have a quotation. Um, um, 
on the refurbishment of the engine. Um, um, it was something like the five thousand to refurbish the engine, and uh, nine or ten to actually purchase a new one. And uh, I've requested the shop to give us a <clears throat> a, a, a kind of the stem to stern kind of evaluation, which we haven't received yet. But the backhoe itself is a creaky. Um, it needs a lot, lot of maintenance in order for it for, for it to be to, to be re reestablished into into a condition that that we can that we can successfully use. And just to discuss about the use of it, that there's a, so much areas within the cemetery, um, and and also areas within the town itself that uh, that the small tobacco um, that gives us proper access that we can't get a, a access with other pieces of equipment that, that are a lot larger. Um, so um, I'm try, trying to see what the value that that's identified. So. So we've identified for 55,000 as being a per price for, for a new machine. And I believe that the, to, just to get back to, to the existing one, I believe it's a 1987 uh, tobacco that, that we already have with, with, with extensive miles and hours on it. Um, but I believe that, that there could, could be a compromise of, of for purchasing a, a used, used unit as well for perhaps the 35 or 40, 40,000. And be able to cut cut back on that, and get a piece of equipment that that still is uh, miles and miles ahead of what what we had, and and we we would be able to maintain and to get some good use out of it for a lot of years to come. So as, as you you're probably not aware that since I've been in council, I've been trying to get out of the cemetery business for the last eight years. So <laughs> if any other cemetery in the county could get fifty thousand dollars given to it every year, they'd be pretty happy. That's basically what we're doing up there. And I'm trying to cover, cut that expense back. Well, well, and we and we do use use that machine in other places throughout yeah. the town for public works. Okay. Um, the other one, other thing that I have there is uh, when it comes, you, you've got us fully vested for the uh, for the pad, uh, the concrete pad in front of the fire hall, and uh, and I would have to I would have to think that the district would contribute 50% of that. So if we budget along that line, that would cover the, uh, you know, some of the capital items there, like for instance, the uh, the arena bathroom re renovations, which are coming from general capital and uh, the floor scrubber, which is general capital. And, uh, you know, then there's the question of, it would probably actually cover the, uh, the uh, skate park additional funding for that. So just a couple things to note there, um, Deputy Mayor, that the general capital reserves that I have noted across from the bathroom renovations, that was my error. I actually have it in deed transfer tax. It's just the, 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 the title that I put okay. there is the wrong one. So I will note that. Um, the, the floor scrubber wouldn't be able to reallocate the deed transfer tax to that again, because that's, um, so that may still have to come from the, the general capital reserves if, if council was moving ahead for that. Yes, I have not heard from the district about their budget approval mm -hmm. process, but certainly, you know, you would think that that's, that a, that's a, a reasonable request. It is a yes. reasonable request that they would fund 50% of that, yeah. that uh, activity, yes. Just for council's benefit, Ms. Dagley, the, the restrictions on the deed transfer tax are self-imposed in our bylaw, right? So that is they correct. would be subject to council being able to change them, though you might find that ill-advised. I just want to... There's so many restrictions that come to us from outside. I just wanted to clarify that. Yes. So, I mean, essentially our, our deed transfer bylaw has that we can use it for infrastructure projects. It just specifically excludes equipment. Equip um, I, I, I can't speak to why that was there. It's, it's not unreasonable just maybe because we were thinking of something for longevity yeah. rather than individual equipment purchases. And so it just has that. But you could change it, certainly. Mm -hmm. Um, but it would be challenging to get that change to do it for in time for this year. I just yes. wanted council to know that it was within their um, prerogative. Certainly, yes. I, I don't dispute. Uh, I, you know, it's probably a good thing. In, in, Neither in, do in, I. At the end I, of the day, I, right? Yeah, but it's. I guess just saying. So that's uh, that for that for the capital. That's probably uh, you know all that I have. But I just you know maybe to 
and, and even if we, we borrow what I think you're suggesting, that's about a cent and a half or a little more than a cent and a half, that's going to go in next year's tax bill, right? So that's the thing that we're always got to be trying, trying to figure out how we can get that cent and a half on this year's tax rate, but yet it won't be, you know, then we can, it's automatically covered for other things next year. That's kind of like what would be my goal. Okay. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Councilor Sanford. I'm not sure if this is the time or if, if I'm supposed to wait until we get to the part where we're talking about the increase, potential increase in taxes and the uh, change to the deed transfer tax. So I want to speak specifically to the deed transfer tax. So do I do that now or what? I think that would, unless it's related to the capital budget right now, we'll have that discussion in the operating. Okay, thank you. But it's noted. Any further discussions on the, on the capital budget? <laughs> Deputy Mayor was fairly comprehensive. I have a few when everybody else is done. Okay, I, the only thing, I mean, and I, I understand, I mean, these aren't brought for frivolously, but, you know, again, we're trying to do everything we can, so if there is a way to maneuver, that's, that was my, that was my whole point here, without trying to defer a lot of other things, to try to maneuver it, that we could afford it somehow or another. Yeah. Um, anyone else? Any questions? I have a... Um, some more general questions just reflecting on strategic direction. So I'm wondering if the CEO or the finance director or anybody or everybody could speak to um, their feeling of how this these capital items help set us up for our five year directions, the strategic plan. I can see a lot of them in there, but with the cuts, you know, how are we making sure we're we're not, you know, lagging or or we're building on on growth. I'll start there and then, you know. I got a few more big ones. I was just seeing if the CEO had an opportunity if she wanted to speak or, you know, certainly when we were reflecting on the changes, your worship, we were, we were trying to be mindful of that. Yeah. Um, you know, knowing that too, that, you know, just because something isn't specifically noted in the, the, the CCP, that, you know, maintaining our equipment and those sort of things are, are critical as, as well. So I don't think that there was anything cut specifically that would deter the progress um, for the CCP. Um, certainly that's why we, we tried to exclude anything for the wastewater treatment yeah. and, and those sort of things. So yeah. don't no. know, I think that answers your question. That answers my question perfectly. I'm just, <laughs> I've always got my eye on that five year finish line. Um, and with that in mind, <laughs> the next question is about um, the wastewater treatment investments, and I'm just wondering how that speaks to uh, potential capacity, um, what these investments would do for potential capacity on the go forward. Um, yes. Um, so, so with the capital projects that we've identified with relationship to the, uh, to, to the capacity, uh, did the did the existing capacity of the wastewater treatment plant as what well as any f future um, stuff um, um, to just to, to start off i don't i don't believe that there's any of the pro projects that, that that relate to directly increasing the capacity at the plant um, the, the capacity is what, what where it's at today um, and we did, don't have any kind of expansion kind of things um, on the table as of yet. Um, uh, even with the pre-design pre that, that, uh, that, that we're undertaking right, right now, all the near-term solutions, um, uh, mainly, um, unless there's some nuances that, that I'm not aware of, it mainly has to do with maintaining everything to its to current capacities. Um, as far as the projects that help us into the future, um, um, the stuff that, that we're doing is anchored off this uh, this I and I study that was done a couple of year, years ago, which is our infiltration and inflows to study. And and for, from what what we've learned over 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 the years is that the amount of the volume of stuff that that we treat. Um, in the what wastewater treatment plant is only a small 
it's a percentage of actual sewage because we have a combined sewer system here um, and we combine um, the storm to sewer in with the in, in with the household waste and we also experience uh, salt water intrusion but that 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 increases the amount of of, uh, of, of the volume flow that that we treat um, so so the pro projects have to do with removing those the, those types of, of flows um, and that in turn increases capacity within the plant yeah, so they all these items speak to capacity speak to increases through diversion. Yes, yes, okay. right. So, so, so all all these the things with the salt water intrusion, um, the, um, the those are sort of things all sort of anchor off this I and I report that was done, and we're and we're yeah. executing the projects that were identified in there, um, and and other projects that that we do <coughs> is this uh, information get gathering type stuff too. Mm -hmm. um, um, in order for, for us to, to be able to determine what where what where infiltrations are uh, occur, occurring, we've got for projects in there for flow flow meters and uh, and stuff of that. In order for us to, to to be able to identify what where these infiltrations exist, so that we can we, we can counteract them with projects in the future. Mm -hmm. And do you think that'll be sufficient in the in the sort of short range to meet objectives while we sort out the long range? From what I understand, yes. I, okay. Um, that this that this infiltration is a large proportion of the uh, of the, the volume that, that we treat on a day to day basis. Okay. Enough for me. Uh, the next question I have is just on Block House Hill, and uh, I'll look to the planner to advise. And it was just in in the vein of is forty thousand sufficient for this year? Uh, thank you. We're, that that will get us started. It, it's sufficient for this year. It, it encompasses uh, a little bit of design work, uh, archaeology, so foundational work. It's it's not for building a road or anything like that. Yeah, it's no, it's no. foundational. Yeah. yeah, but that still allows us to meet sort of future five year targets. That will. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then the final thing that I had was um, related to the two proposed deferrals at the academy, and I'm just wondering um, if for the next meeting we could reach out to our, in the same way that we've got an ask on operating later on, perhaps we could reach out to our friends at the foundation and partners and see if there's maybe some potential appetite for, um, we could approve that um, contingent on some sort of contribution from them that it might not need to be deferred if we can find partnerships there. Yeah, uh, certainly we could do that in your worship. Yeah. That would not be a problem. And then my final question is um, with respect to some of the funding opportunities from other levels of government that come might come this year and other levels of government having introduced their budgets. I know you can't budget for it, but I'm just wondering, is there anything on the list that may be able to, you know, rise from the dead should those opportunities materialize. This particular capital budget is is challenging for those items. I mean, the the biggest thing for us is getting that pre-design work done for the wastewater treatment yeah. plant, so that we can have that lined up. There may be some other sm smaller items, yeah. Your Worship. And I mean, certainly, if we came with an opportunity, we would certainly bring that forth to council for that to consider whether yeah. we needed to expedite something or yeah. or change something up because, yeah. you know. If you know when you approve these, these projects can go forward. But if we get to a particular point that we learn some new information and something hasn't, you know, council certainly has the ability to to change a focus if they if they need to. Yeah. Those are all my questions related to the capital budget. Are there is there any further any further questions or discussion? All right. Seeing. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Ahead. Well, I guess I was going to ask your worship then. I, what the next steps were, like, you know, there were the suggestions from the deputy mayor. Are, are we just to incorporate those for the next yeah, time? No, Is no. that uh, just looking at, I mean, none of those were strictly speaking motions. Are we content for staff to take the deputy mayor's suggestions under advisement and come back to us with some sort of uh, revised proposal for May the 4th and just getting everybody's, everybody's sense of, you know, the overall broad structure of, uh, 
of the capital budget deferrals that have been proposed. That seems satisfactory to everyone in the in the broad scope, saving the deputy mayor's comment. Okay. Thank you. We will hope in earnest to approve a capital budget on May the 4th. Did you want to go on to the utilities? Certainly, sorry, Your Worship. Certainly we can review the uh, utilities. I had not brought forth any New uh, suggestions for, for changes from the original budget document okay. uh, for the utilities. Um, for the most part, um, minus the grant, they're all funded from their own uh, yeah. depreciation reserves yeah. um, sort of thing. So. All right. Well, I, is the council's feeling with a discussion on this? I think this is a quicker discussion, which is why I'm suggesting it now, because I think the operating budget will be the meatier discussion. Is the council's pleasure that we discuss this now? All right. So if there's any discussion on, the, uh, on either of the utility budgets, the floor is open. Deputy Mayor. Well, I don't have any issues with uh, either one of the two utility uh, uh, capital budgets or budget in general, general, even the general budget as it's presented. I mean, I don't, if that's a, if it's a benefit to staff to have that, you know, pre-approved, then at least you can get on with, you know, running those two facilities. Uh, I'd be okay with that. If it pleases council, if the council doesn't have any concerns. Is that a motion to recommend to council? Yes, I would motion that we would uh, uh, pre-approve the capital and the uh, General budget, operating budgets operating for both budgets of the utilities. For both utilities. Okay. You see, you have draft motions to that effect. Okay. Uh, yes. Just, uh, certainly, it's exactly as the deputy mayor has mentioned, we would just incorporate the dollar, the total dollar amounts, just for reference. Yeah. Is there a seconder for that motion, Council Burgess? Is there any discussion or questions at this stage? Keeping in mind that this is a recommendation to Council, then from the committee, that would then be open to debate at, at Council. Seeing none, I have one uh, quick question, and it relates to the 10-year uh, capital budget for the, elect the electric utility, the solar assessment study at 16.8. Uh, um, I, I have two questions related to that because it speaks to our, you know, some of our comprehensive plan initiatives. One is, um, do we feel that that's a sufficient figure for what, I, it just didn't seem to me, like it seems to me like that's a pretty sizable study and 16.8 was a little cheap. Um, I'm happy if it is. And then the other question was the rest of the nine years don't have anything related to that. And I assume that was just contingent on the results of the study. Uh, and, and it was your worship. I mean, I know Mr. Bracken had done a report for council and had gotten some pricing and that's where that 16, eight number had come from your worship. Um, and, you know, so, yeah, you know, that is based on one provider. I yeah. think. Do you feel that's a sufficient cushion? I do. The only, uh, I do. We had uh, Natural Forces do a proposal for us, and I think it, it came in around 11,000. Um, I've been looking into a lot of the funding. Uh, so we, and some of that funding, at least through FCM, is contingent uh, on, um, oh, what do you call it? Like a, a phase one uh, environmental assessment on the area. So that's that represents you know the rest of that pool of money up to the 16.8 is so that hopefully we could incorporate a you know phase one a desktop environmental study that would make us eligible for uh, some more funding groups for that project. So at okay. this point, yes, I do feel it's sufficient. And if it's not, what options do we have in terms well, of? I guess that's what I was going to mention, Your Worship, was that the. It, you know, we're, we're looking to apply for a grant for this thing, but also that would be funded from the, the utilities depreciation reserve, which certainly would be sufficient if that came in and said, you know, another five grand or something like that, that would be sufficient to cover that. Okay. So, uh, Councilor Halverson. I don't, I don't know if I want to get into this, this one right now, but just one of the concerns I had was what the, the street lighting I noticed you know, we are, we're coming up against the deadline to replace the LEDs. I see in here we've got some funding uh, for a, a consultant to come in. I'm just curious, uh, we do have that contract with NSP at this point. 
uh, are we not just getting our fixtures from them? Are they making the decisions or how, how is it decided what fixtures go where? I see we're, we're at some points we have the old HPS and in Newtown they're going to LEDs. Uh, are, where, where are we getting that money and where those revenues and the equipment from? So we do, we do buy our equipment from uh, Nova Scotia Power when they're, when they're installed. Uh, and they'd be happy to put the LED standard that they use um, up if that's what we wanted. However, um, I you maybe weren't in the gallery the evenings when we had made some of those changes in Old Town and it certainly thought that we need to go out and do a consultation with the citizens because it, it you know, it do, it's not always conducive. The street lighting that Nova Scotia Power is using mainly for roadways is not always conducive for a, 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 a community that's as dense as, as Lunabar. I was definitely there and I can tell you all about 4K, <laughs> 7K and 10K lighting if you <laughs> want to get into it. But, uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, there's one outside my neighbor's house. Uh, anyway, I guess really my, my point is, uh, I just wonder if, uh, I just want to make sure we do this. When, when is that study plan to happen? I'm not sure who I should direct that to. And we should have a standard, I guess, for the whole town. We shouldn't be piecemealing this across. And that's exactly what the study. So uh, the, the approval of the budget will move that study forward. And so hopefully this summer mm -hmm. and by fall, we will be able to get those decisions made of what we're doing. I, I, you know, that may be ambitious, but um, you know, we are coming up against that looming deadline. So we have to yeah. move that along quickly. Yeah, we've got just over a year. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. The federal budget is set to have some money for green retrofits. Oh, good. Yeah. All right. Child care and green retrofits, excellent. And just because it's been raised by Councillor Halverson, that study will give us basically a comprehensive go forward path. Uh, certainly that would be the goal of the, the study because you know that's what that's what really what we need. So right? yeah, providing adequate lighting while reducing light pollution. I think a standard throughout town might be ambitious just in the sense that there are different levels of density and setback and all of that. But that's that's for a lighting consultant to figure out, not I guess you know, my next question would be though when when do we uh, when we have that person hired you know when can we anticipate that that study will be that finished that and within the community engagement and all that yeah pardon me uh, when when can we anticipate that that person will be hired that engagement will happen and we'll be ready to move forward with the well, recommendation certainly we ha we need to um, you know with the approval of the budget um, move forward in getting an RFP out and, and those things so as quickly yeah. as we can move those those forward you know. Depends on your appetite tonight. Not that hungry. <laughs> All right, thanks. All right. It has been moved and seconded. Is there any further questions or discussion? So um, is it possible to bring up the motion just so everybody's aware of what we're voting on? I know Lisa has had a time. Oh. So, so it, really it, this wasn't, it wasn't in the, the oh, it wasn't in the package you've got no, it. can you read I mean, it i can read one off yeah. to you your worship if you if you like because i i did bring the motions from last year last year but uh so it would be you know moved and seconded that council hereby approves and so it would be recommended the committee council, hereby recommend right, the 21 22 water utility uh, uh, operating budget in the amount of yeah and the the water utility capital budget in the amount of and the same thing for the electric utility. Yeah. So, and that's the format they'll come to council in as recommendations at um, possibly the next council meeting, maybe the one after, we'll see. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion's carried. It was easy. Now on to the operating budget. So I will, Lisa's also prepared a top sheet to help deal with our unfunded operating balance. I'd note for council's uh, benefit that there was a late breaking request and it's noted in your agenda from our friends at the Academy Foundation for an operating grant. I'm gonna suggest that we defer getting into that uh, until May 4th because I think there's a follow up letter that will come to councilors with more detail, but we just wanted to make everybody aware of the operating uh, request. Is that amenable to councilors? I suspect we won't be approving a operating budget tonight, so. I think that should be fine. And I think there may be a request for a presentation at that point and we will dutifully uh, let everybody know. So Lisa, if you can just run through the, the top sheet analysis you've got here and then we'll open up the floor to questions. Uh, I think that's page 14 in the- it, it is page 14 in the, if you're in the page like 5A, but if you're looking at the overall package, 
uh, Councillor Stanford, it's page 176 if you're in the full agenda package. No problem. So at the last committee meeting, um, it was a request of staff to uh, develop um, a path forward to balancing the operating budget. Um, as Councillor is aware, we have $498,000 um, of unfunded ex expenditures. And so this cover sheet outlines a, a, a potential path forward for that. So there was lots of discussion at our last meeting about the three studies under general government, the organizational review, the policy and bylaw review, and the performance indicators. And so there were some suggestions there of cuts to spread that over e either the maximum amount for this year or, or over a period of years. I don't know if you, your worship, if you would like me to stop at those things or go down through all of them just briefly. I think just go through all okay, of them very sure. quickly. Um, and so then the, the next item is uh, uh, the change from a full-time uh, staff position for an economic development officer and changing that to a contracted position. Under the uh, Heritage Financial Incentive Programs to defer that implementation because that hasn't taken place yet. Um, we had discussed this at our last meeting, the, the potential of a one-time operating reserve transfer um, on the back of our, our light winter season that we had just had. There is uh, a recommendation for a change in the deed transfer tax rate from 1% to 1.5% and that the additional half percent would be directed towards our operating budget. Um, if we added additional enforcement, well, addition some enforcement in our parking meters um, and that there may be some attention uh, addition for additional revenue there. Uh, a potential fee increase across all sort of for user fee fees that we have within the town, recreation, cemetery, et cetera, and a potential of $8,000 additional revenue there. And then in order to balance it all would then still require a three cent tax rate increase. Thank you for that. I'll open the floor to questions and discussion. Looking around. Councillor Halverson. Yeah, just uh, on the economic development officer change from a full-time staff to a contract. So what's, uh, what th what does the contract position mean? Is that still a 40 hour uh, or, or whatever it is per week person? Uh, for Is that just for duration? Uh, what's the situation? I would not see it as a, full-time 40 hours a week um, position. It would be more like a, a special projects or a limited uh, amount of time. Okay. Yeah, that causes me concern because I really think that you know, I, at least the read I got from council here was that we we really feel it's important that we have somebody who's, whose focus is on, on driving uh, economic development here and being a contact person for you know, anyone willing, willing to do development or investing or in the community, so uh, you know, I really hesitate. I don't like the idea of, of changing that, uh, reducing those hours, and I, I want some consistency that when somebody has a question, they know where to turn to. Um, and just on, if you'll allow me, because I know your next one is because it was Councillor Sanford, um, but relevant to this, the forty-one, how much of that would be benefits, um, Lisa? Like if. If we were to have a, a full-time contracted position, what would the figure be? So I assume that this was still full-time, but that the contracted had just allowed us to reduce the benefits. It wasn't just reducing the, the benefits, yeah. Your Worship. Um, I have to flip to the, the page that has it on it, but yeah. um, just to refresh my memory. Um, and I don't know if the CAO can speak to the, the work that may have been thought to be changed by doing a contract position versus a full-time position. But the original budget had um, $70,000 in for a full-time position, mm -hmm. uh, $14,000 for, for benefits, mm -hmm. and $7,000 for supports that may require for starting a new position. So I mean, so that, that savings is $20,000 in the position, and then those benefits is what that was. Okay. You know, it, you know, if we're already in good part of April. If we don't start it till 
June, maybe it can be done in a different way to be close to full time. I don't know. I've got counselor, uh, you were done? I just want to follow up on what you were saying about uh, contract position. I actually, I fully endorse the idea of it being a contract position, a term, uh, as opposed to, you know, a full-time staff person. So I'd like to see what they can do, you know, uh, without, without having a, a long-term commitment. And if it doesn't work out, we've got to find a position for this person. Uh, anyway, thank you. Okay. I have Councillor Sanford now. I have a question with regards to the deed transfer tax. So if changes were made to the bylaw, could it be effective for the full fiscal year or does it only start at the point that the bylaw is changed? It becomes effective with the change of the bylaw. And can I make a statement? You can make any statement you like. Okay. So I'll try to keep it to five minutes. Okay. <laughs> Just saying. And I want to ask folks to just please keep an open mind. And what I'm going to ask is you think about doing something that we've done differently. So not to panic, just try to keep an open mind and think about the same thing differently. When we're talking about the deed transfer tax, Lisa, thank you so much for sending that email and letting me know that it was 2003 that that came into effect. And at that point in time, it was 1%. Property assessment or property sale values or purchase price values of properties since 2003, I think I can say easily that they have either doubled and in some cases they've tripled. Which means that the deed transfer tax that's being paid has doubled or tripled since 2003 when this came into effect. So I'm gonna give three examples. So uh, 55 Montague Street in 2003 was listed and sold for $390,000. It just recently sold. The list price was $749,000. I don't have the actual sale price, but I'm confident it's close to what that list price was. So that's the Moore Ash House down on Montague. On 56 Dufferin Street, which has just sold recently, so I'm sure folks have driven by it. In 2010, that house sold for 268,000 and it's just recently listed price was 499,000. It doesn't say the sold price, but again, it sold within a week. I suspect it would be close to the list price. And then another property I'm sure folks are familiar with is 324 Lincoln Street. And that is currently the Turner property, which sold in 2007 for $440,000 and it's currently on the market for $1,950,000. So again, I'm just trying to demonstrate what I'm saying in that the values of the properties have doubled and in some cases tripled, and so have our revenues that have been generated from the deed transfer tax. What I'd like to suggest, if it's possible, and again, I appreciated the note about changes take time and a certain amount of sales would have to take place, if a change uh, were enacted to get that 0.5%. What I'd like to propose, as opposed to increasing the deed transfer tax 0.5%, I would like to propose leaving it at 1%, however, have the bylaw amended so that 0.5% of the funds raised through the deed transfer tax go to the operational budget, as we were suggesting here. I would go out on a limb and say that it's not going to make a big impact as we go forward. The biggest impact would have been in this last year in the context of the numbers of sales that have happened at the price points that they have happened. But as we go forward, it would align more with what up to last year the previous funds raised were through that 1%, um, which is then divided in two. I might have confused that last part. No, oh, Ed, Ed's shaking his head. I'm okay. So in the context of having to go through the process maybe of approving a bylaw change, and it might take up to three months, I'm thinking if this is something that council wanted to follow through, maybe we might be able to expedite the process in the context of just making it a bit of a priority so that we could put it through. And again, I feel that we would still continue to receive a substantive amount in our capital reserve funds through 
percent of the deed transfer tax. So I think that it's just taking the same monies that we have, just redirecting it to the points that we need it so that we don't have to bear an increase in deed transfer tax, which in turn supports housing that's affordable because I'm sure a lot of folks have gone through buying the house and then you get that big ticket at the end of it, along with legal fees, insurance, and so on, that you have to pay this deed transfer tax. So if we're looking at housing that's affordable, I think we need to keep this in mind for folks that what the implications are in that context. The other part is I feel as we go forward, it will help to build and allow us to adjust to increases in operating expenses that we don't have access to at this point. That's it. That's it. Okay. So um, speaking specifically to the increase in uh, the proposed increase in deed transfer tax, I think it's probably useful just to do a once around around the table to the uh, get people's feelings on where we're at in terms of the staff proposal or Councillor Sanford's suggestion. Um, just if everybody wants to weigh in. I think it's Councillor Halverson. You just look down this way. I always go first. I don't mind. <laughs> um, I did just be clear one time, uh, Councillor Sanford, if you could reiterate, you're you're proposing the, uh, the one percent to one and a half, taking that half percent, not putting it in operating, but putting it into capital. You said. I want to be clear. About I'm that. not proposing a change. I'm, okay. I'm proposing we leave it at one percent, mm -hmm. but we amend the um, bylaw so that. 0.5 of that 1% can go into operational funds and the other 0.5 goes into the capital reserve funds. Thank you. Thanks for making that clear. Uh, I guess my question, I, I would like to hear back from staff then what the implications of that would be. Uh, I mean, I know I see a half percent increase here you know, generates an extra 80K, uh, but I just more to the operating budget and, and what impact, you know, what, what cascade of effect does that have for the rest of your budgeting process? Yeah. If I may, Your Worship. So uh, certainly, it definitely would have an impact. I mean, obviously, um, if that change, as, as Councillor Sanford has suggested, went forward, it could still potentially have that same amount of revenue for your operating budget for this upcoming year. So that, that wouldn't imp impact that necessarily right now. It, I definitely have concerns that it could impact your future capital um, funding. Um, we're, we're looking, you know, with based on the model of, of a few years of, and, and perhaps we can do that in the forward detail another evening, but a, a few years of, of tricky capital borrowing if we want to make sure that we, we have a lot enough for potential upgrades to the wastewater treatment plant. And so we need to have the ability to fund some capital from, from our reserves, and that is one of those steady streams that we have. I, I appreciate what Councillor Sanford has said that the, you know, prices have have increased and there, there's increased revenues as a result of that, but those are already incorporated into that steady stream that we're, we're working with when we're projecting those out for those capital, capital items. So, you know, while it won't impact how you balance your budget right here, right now, if you were to make the change suggested, it will certainly impact how you fund your capital in the future year. Deputy Mayor. Uh, well, I, I do support the, the 1.5. Um, we're always, we, we have to find ways to, like, to uh, sustain our infrastructure and, 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 and build infrastructure. And if we're going to expand our town, we're going to be build not only sustaining old infrastructure, we're going to be building new infrastructure. And I think that's a, a great opportunity to, uh, to do that. Um, you know, and, it, and it's sort of like I look at it as if there's a, you know, a newcomer comes in up front and they're kind of paying for the infrastructure that we're all supporting here over the years. So I think it's a, I think it's a good tax in, in that regard. Um, and I think it's, um, I think it's responsible to have that 1% for, for capital, uh, but our, our needs going forward is going to be a little more operational and that's where I, you know, so I like the half percent going, the new half percent going for, for operating expenses. So that, that would be where I, that's my feelings on, on that particular item. Okay. Did anybody else want to weigh in? Councillor Duggan? I'm just curious to know what the uh, common practice, I guess, is for something like this in other municipalities. Is this typically 
um, where the deed transfer tax is allocated? It, it, um, it really does depend on the municipality. Certainly some have the entire amount goes into operating. Some have the entire amount goes into capital. It, it just depends on um, a variety of factors, just like we can't compare every municipality. Everybody has their individual needs, their individual financial plan. Yeah. And just for councilors' benefit, the, the amount ranges from 0.5 in some municipalities to 1.5 in others. And just to compare ourselves to our sort of county level peer group, we are the lowest uh, deed transfer tax rate in Lunenburg County. So these figures are up to date, right? Yeah, so three of the municipalities are 1.5, Bridgewater, Mahone Bay, and Chester, and the municipality of the District of Lunenburg is 1.25. Deputy Mayor? That was just for council's benefit. I wasn't. Yeah, and the other item that I'm, the benefit of having it in like a capital item is because it does fluctuate. So it's like, you know, if, if it does go down over the course of time, it, you know, and that would adversely affect your operating, that would really adversely affect the way we do business. So if it's, uh, if it's, I like the way it's set up because we always know what we got the year after. So I know it's hard to wait for when we need money right now, but it, it's probably the, the most responsible way to do it. Yeah. I just wanna, if anybody else wants to weigh in, uh, Councillor Bertels, and then I'll come to you, Councillor Halvis. Well, as, as the one who hasn't said anything yet, I suppose I'll, <laughs> I mean, uh, I do want to uh, certainly thank Councillor Sanford for the very intensive uh, research towards that, and, and I certainly see where she's coming from, but uh, I do have to agree with uh, the increase, especially with the information, thank you, uh, Mayor, for uh, stating the uh, the rest of the municipalities in this county are already at 1.5%. Uh, sounds like we're sort of trailing behind, and if it's something that can work for the long term, then I think it's extremely beneficial for us. And just because I'm the only, you weren't, I hadn't spoken yet, so you're off the hook for being last, but I tend to agree with the Deputy Mayor and the staff's concern for what it's worth. I don't think we need to resolve this particular conversation tonight, but just putting it out there where I'm at, and now I've got Councillor Halverson again. Yeah, I just, I'd like to comment on, on a couple of things there. The, uh, I wouldn't say we're trailing the other municipalities by, creating a, a tax increase, but, um, and I think, but I do think we need to recognize that uh, Lunenburg residents have enjoyed a, a, lawyer t a lower tax, uh, deed tax transfer for some time. Um, and to do the deputy mayor's point though, I, I, I am concerned with the perception that it's, you know, newcomers to Lunenburg who are paying this, you know, there's, I'm sure there's a large number of people who are moving homes, you know, from one to another uh, who are, Paying that, yeah, exactly. We all know, we all know. So it's it, it's it's a bite, and we, you know, every municipality has to pay it. My concern is, you know, if we if we don't get it here, uh, we we've got to get it somewhere else. And there's only so many places that we can raise revenue, raise taxes. And I'm loath to, you know, put a, another penny on the the any of the uh, either the residential or commercial rates uh, to make up extra revenue uh, when you know we have seemed to have a system here that will you know function as as we need it. So. But again, I, think my, I want to express my gratitude to Councillor Sanford for the, the work and, and bring this forward. It's a great discussion. And Councillor Sanford would like to weigh in again. Thank you, Councillor Halverson. <laughs> um, just a couple of comments as I'm listening. And I, again, I really appreciate the input and the different thoughts and so on. But I'm hearing about um, you know planning as we go forward. While it might, might be a reasonable decision in the context of the budget at this point, but as we go forward, we might have to be mindful of this. What concerns me is we can't plan for real estate values to double or triple. So I don't think that would have been built in. Perhaps it was in 2003. People thought, well, we'll just go for the 1% because we know in five years time it'll double in 10 years time it might even triple, right? So I don't think planning was done in that way. So I just want to speak to that. The other part of it is um, to Deputy Mayor Moser's point about being responsible as we go forward. I couldn't agree more. We really need to be responsible as we go forward. And again, I don't necessarily see it. I see it. 
a more effective use of what we have for resources for fiscal and physical. And to Councillor Halverson's point about, you know, we need to get this from somewhere. And we do, we absolutely do. So you're going to hear me speaking and Mayor uh, Risser knows that I'm working on a, a motion, a, a request for a motion mm -hmm. report, some, anyhow, working on the paper and um, looking at how we're using our land assets and how we're not using our land assets, but how we can leverage our land assets to number one, through the sale of our lands, generate revenues that would then go to the capital budget to develop the water and sewer lines that we so badly need, separate it uh, to, to the engineer's point. Um, using that as a beginning point to then leverage property sales that no longer in the name of the town. So people that, that own these properties are paying taxes that will then sustain the town. And when they sell these properties or sell homes on these properties, then we generate more in the context of deed transfer tax. So I do feel it's a responsible, sustainable route to go forward. I feel sometimes the easy part is let's just raise its tax or let's just raise that tax because that's all we've had. But again, I just ask if folks might want to think about doing the same thing differently or just giving some thought to it before they make a decision. Thank you. Certainly. And I don't think we'll reach any decision on the operating budget tonight. So there's plenty of time for thoughtful consideration. Did anybody else have uh, any comments with respect to the proposed staff uh, way out of our unfunded operating liabilities? Deputy Mayor. Well, just one, one more comment with the, uh, the one-time reserve coming over from the snow removal. Again, that's, that's again, that's gonna, it's, it's great, that gets us through this year, but it's gonna bite us again next year because we'll be looking for that $90,000. So, um, you know, I, I know it's hard to say, you know, rate, rate, rate for taxes, but if we rate it for that now, use that 90,000 and some of those items to the capital it, things that we were looking for, and then we, we got to cover for two years, right? So. You know, I don't know. I guess we'll have to at some point in time grapple. Like, do we do we take one big bee sting with tax rate increases, or do we take a dozen mosquito bites? You know, that's <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what we'll be grappling with. Okay, I'll just allow anybody else to weigh in before. Okay, Councillor Sam. I'll take the dozen mosquito bites, Peter. <laughs> I'm really, and um, that would be my one last comment uh, to. Mayor Risser's uh, request there. Are there other items on the uh, list? And again, the tax rate is something I would like for us to take another look at. Can we find a different way? Do we really have to increase the tax rate? So it's a, I'm just putting it out as a challenge. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sanford. Anybody else with comments about the operating? Um, I have a few. I mean, I appreciate that this was a big nut to crack, and I appreciate that staff have been pretty creative in doing that. You will not be surprised to know that I would like to see more in the sort of strategic priorities for which you propose cuts. And I'm, I'm wondering, uh, to the point of Councillor Sanford, if there's some opportunity to do some more. I have a couple questions. The first is, um, is there an opportunity to do some more scraping? of the existing operating budget. What's your sense of that before I ask council if we want to get into it fairly heavily at the next meeting? Um, I would just note your worship that there is, I, I do feel that it is pretty lean budget to, to start with. You know, last year, you know, when COVID hit, we cut $374,000 from the budget. Mm -hmm. um, we lowered the commercial tax rate by four cents and the residential tax rate by half of half a cent um, and and really trimmed all the, the fat that there could possibly have been found. Um, and, you know, when we were considering this budget, there were some things that we just had to bring back up because we couldn't sustain those in the, the long term. But there, I mean, if you asked us to go back again, uh, I may be able to find you a little bit more. My sense would be I couldn't I couldn't really get you to an, another cent off. That would be the the most that I could mm -hmm. could find somewhere for you. Okay. Without impacting service cuts, obviously. I mean, if you, you make a substantial service change, then you know you can obviously find 
more money, but it, it would impact service changes. Uh, yeah, I'll put that question to council in a minute. The other thing was um, at the last meeting I had mentioned like what would be a fair value potentially, now we've approved the utility budget, but for utility sharing, I just assumed there was no option there. Yeah. Really with those uh, budgets, I didn't think that there was an opportunity for any additional um, allocations there. Yeah. Um, and what was uh, in the in the absence of cuts? Then the natural other question raises, you know, what's our ability um, in your mind to potentially raise more revenues that are sort of alternative revenues to taxes? And I mean, you really are limited, other than uh, your, you know, your user fees. Mm -hmm. um, th those those are really your choices, you yeah. know. And uh, so some of the, I mean, the operating cuts we would have to get into. And, and discuss as a council at a future meeting if council was um, favorably disposed to that. But uh, I do just wanna ask the CAO with respect to the deferred item on potential fuel savings, mm -hmm. if that was brought back in sufficient time that could be incorporated in this budget or no? Um, really, unless they were hugely significant, uh, Your Worship, I don't, they wouldn't actually impact this budget because yeah. the, all the fuel budgets are, are based on, you know, this is what we think we're going to get. There's a factor for inflation during the year and an average usage. And so I don't see us making any potential cuts based on our fuel tender, no. Okay. So then my question to council, I suppose, is um, I, I appreciate that this kept us at a very high level for the discussion for th for this time, but I knew at some point we were gonna have to get down into the, the nitty gritty. Are other people favorably disposed to doing that at the next meeting? Deputy Mayor? Just, just one point. You don't have I, to answer that. No, I guess oh, he was tonight. asking me to come back with that. I guess All I would right. certainly have to confer yeah. with Mr. McPherson and, and his staff yeah. uh, of what that would look like because that would be significant yeah. Um, yeah. cut uh, there. Like we said, impacting service levels. That's, that's, that's where you're going to, if you're looking for more money from just cuts, that, that unfortunately is, is the level I think that you might be at. And I guess for me, I'm, I'm trying to do something without really impacting the quality of life of our of our uh, of our residents. And you know, there's two big nuts. It's like the arena and the and the community center. But those are areas that you know enhances you know the quality of life for our, our residents on a, especially in the winter time, right? And to me, that's when we really need it, right? So uh, we don't have many places to go, but you know, then get to the get into the tax zone, right? All right. Is there, I can see this is going to be our first vigorous debate. I knew it had to come at some point. The budget's the, budget's the appropriate place for it. Um, is, is everybody feeling that we've discussed this sufficiently for tonight? And we'll come back to this at the May 4th, then Committee of the Whole meeting with the operating budget. Um, and everybody will pick their favorite thing at that point. All right. I'm also, <laughs> I, I'm also sensing this may be the time for a five minute recess. Is that, is anybody amenable to that? So with council's indulgence, we'll recess for uh, let's say 10 minutes and reconvene at 7.35.
I think we'll be out of here before you have to leave. All right. So we will reconvene after our recess. It is 7.38. Um, the only two items left are, we'll start with intermunicipal bylaw enforcement discussion update. Um, I have made contact with one of the municipalities, Your Worship, that was mentioned, and I have a discussion with them on Thursday uh, morning of this week, Your Worship, to follow up. Uh, I think there was considerable interest on their part, um, sort of the two components of policing that were mentioned, and uh, I will provide a report afterward. So. Sounds good. Is that amenable to anybody? Any questions? Thumbs up. Okay. That takes us on to the second matter um, for tonight, which is consequent, recommend, uh, consequent amendments uh, to the provincial volunteer recognition and representative volunteer selection process policy, um, revised policy um, in light of the proposed direction to um, wind up the committee that typically selects that. That would, I believe, come to the council table is the suggested direction. Um, so there's a motion there. Um, whoever moves it will wind up being the one giving notice of motion at the council meeting. Uh, are there any questions for staff on that or is it anybody's pleasure to move that? Moved by the deputy mayor. Is there a seconder for that? Seconded by Councillor Ernst. Is there any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? The motion is carried. There is no new business. Our next meeting date is Tuesday, May 4th at 6 p.m.